this is how we are supposed to reference this lecture. Author's family name, initial, profile name in YouTube, year, month, day, followed by the title in italics, video, then published by YouTube. Then you state the URL. In the Philippines, high school writing curriculum includes objectives to develop students' critical thinking skills. Hence, a term paper is required. Term paper is a short writing project that requires students to search for related reading sources based on a given topic. A topic can be broad, example, smoking. It can be narrow, example, vaping. A topic can specifically be reduced to stating a claim, example, vaping can harm the human's respiratory system. All sources searched and read by students should be relevant readings based on scientific findings. In doing a term paper, Filipino writing teachers are expected to teach their students proper use of the library, which is more often than not, will end up students memorizing codes or traditional and modern library systems. Most Filipino teachers nowadays would guide students to search for internet sources, given the public school's inadequacy of reading resources. As the common adage states, everything is in the internet. The problem is, do teachers accept term papers without checking the credibility of bibliography? Why is checking the credibility of the sources important? Honesty must be part of any school's core values. If teachers do not put premium to intellectual property rights, who will in the coming future? There will come a time that our students will be reading fake sources and dubious propaganda in the internet. The value of authorial honesty must start with the teachers. The problem, how do teachers deal with students submitting term paper full of plagiarized items? Do teachers contribute in the implementation of strict ethics rules in doing research? If you were a student, how do you deal with classmates whom you know do copy ideas from the internet without citing the sources properly? Have you encountered international or local reading sources that describe the extent to which students, high school, college, or graduate commit intellectual or academic dishonesty? So where do we start? We must start with high school teachers to implement stricter policies on intellectual honesty. It is in high school that the writing skills are already advancing to a higher level including the development of high critical thinking. This lecture series will provide our students and teachers basic practical thesis writing guides applicable to their own writing classes. So in the Philippines, a term paper is preferred in high school because the writing course aims to develop students' writing skills such as vocabulary, grammar, semantics, syntax, discourse, and thinking appropriate to their level. Thesis writing is required in senior high school, college, master's, and doctorate writing curricula. Problem. Can a high school teacher require students title defense? What is a title defense? So to answer the previous questions, we have to determine first what exactly is the difference between term paper and, a, and thesis writing. A term paper is a short writing assignment that allows students to provide support or argument to a specified claim. 
Example, vaping is dangerous to humans' respiratory system. All sources required should be relevant to this claim. This claim is a negative idea about electronic cigarette or e-cigarette. It is a point advanced against the producers of vape. If I were the owner of vape, I will definitely react because the writer is raising an issue. This raising of an issue is in fact the thesis statement. Before I usually start to teach my students how to write a thesis paper, I usually ask this question, what is a thesis? And the usual reply or the usual replies or answers I get would be, it's a systematic in investigation, researching, going to the library and sleep, googling, or even high stress level, or they said, nose bleeding. These are the common answers I get from my students. But by now, if you're a keen reader, you already know the answer to this. It is, at its simplest concept, a point advanced about a certain topic or an issue. We cannot proceed to let students search or Google anything in the internet if we do not review the very foundation of thesis writing, the patterns of essay development. Students must be clear of what they are writing. If the teacher failed to review this basic writing lesson, a student, after choosing a broad topic like smoking, would be thinking of a lot of things. His father, brother, neighbor, and himself were smokers. He would pen ideas that could be biased to the benefits of smoking. Or if a student is asthmatic, he would immediately have negative perceptions about smoking. When a student starts composing, he would write subjective ideas. He might start by making narrations about the satisfying feeling of smoking, just like drinking coffee. I interviewed my previous classmate in the past about smoking. I asked him what really is the feeling when he smokes. And he replied that smoking is just like drinking coffee. If he won't drink coffee the entire day, he becomes restless. Something is incomplete for that day. And so this novice writer would tend to narrate about how he would develop good social skills when he is with fellow smokers. And this is the usual observation that we can make. That sometimes uh, students, for example, would be gathering around strangers uh, when they are smoking. But a student who is asthmatic would also narrate about the excruciating feeling of not being able to breathe because of the smell of the smoke. She would narrate stories about a neighbor who died of cancer because of smoking. The point is, the race of the personal experience is biased and therefore subjective. A term paper is supposed to be objective. So review patterns of essay development will provide students various ways on how to state their ideas in a more appropriate way. It can also guide them on what necessary pieces of information or ideas they need to supplement in order that their discussion can be more balanced and comprehensive. The patterns of essay development are description, narration, exposition, which includes definition, exemplification, process, cause and effect, comparison and contrast, division and classification, and argumentation. Description is the image of an object, a place, or a person put into words. Narration is the telling of events that occur. Exposition includes 
defining a term or concept, giving examples, detailing a process of doing, analyzing cause and effect, comparing and contrasting, dividing and classifying. Argumentation is attempting to discuss an issue which leads to either supporting or defending a claim or assumption where there is dichotomy in terms of belief. Some tertiary universities in Manila would already require their basic English 1 classes to write descriptive, extended definition, problem solution, or argumentative essays that are based on the realities of social issues and not based their thesis on fiction. Students are not merely encouraged to write a diary, a short story, or editorials, but they are now expected to write a research paper. Thesis writing is an academic paper following the steps of a research process. Can a short story or an editorial be a form of an academic paper? Partially, yes, but these are not fully an academic paper. The writing curriculum expects students to articulate their ideas based on scientific and reliable sources which are empirical in nature and not just based on one's imagination or opinion, such as writing a short story or an editorial. Before we define what empirical research is, we have to define the concept research. First, so research simply means a step-by-step -step process on finding answers to logical questions. Or, research may refer to a systematic and scientific probe or investigation about an occurrence or phenomenon seeking to provide explanation to previously raised problem. Research seeks to replicate or test previous assumptions, theories, or hypotheses. Or, research would mean that one documents or analyzes sources which prove or disprove previous assumptions or claims in an objective and logical practice. So what makes research empirical? Empirical research requires methodology on how the data was gathered, such as the use of the following instruments, surveys, interviews, or performance tests. So empirical research requires data. However, research may not be empirical, just like doing document analysis, which would use secondary data. So the answer to the previous problem, can the teacher require title defense to high school students? I'm afraid not. Defense is part of the rigorous process of thesis writing where three other teachers are required to evaluate the paper of students. It starts with title defense, then if the title passed the panel's critique, proposal defense is scheduled. The ultimate stage is final defense. So, excluding prerequisite courses, the writing curriculum of senior high school and college would calendar thesis writing to two semesters, equivalent to six months, masters one year, doctorate two years or more depending on what university because the students need more time gathering and analyzing data. Precisely, high school students are not prepared for this complicated process. So why then require title defense if students are not submitting an empirical paper, but merely a literature review, which is the term paper? So when does a literary fiction or an editorial be considered academic paper? When a student prefers to make a document or textual analysis about the social, political, or psychological presumptions or influences along the lines of the author's short story or point, this is considered an academic paper. Or if the student decides to analyze the power relations, such as superior-inferior complex, discrimination, or discourse markers in the Philippine editorials, 
This is academic paper. When students are not exposed to the patterns of essay development, the tendency is that they will write according to what they know, not knowing the facts or pieces of evidence about the effects of smoking would lead them to argue on the basis of their personal experience and not on the basis of the experts' claims and findings, without the teacher's feedback. Yet, some students may sound very aggressive, very arrogant, even especially for those who are very sensitive or emotional. Some novice writers may end up describing tentative ideas because they have not read the needed sources yet. Tone is important in academic paper because the reader needs to be convinced on the basis of clarity and credibility of the facts, discussion, arguments presented, and how these ideas were projected in the paper. Tone refers to how a writer sounds, projector shows his ideas to, to the reader. Is she aggressive? Is she arrogant? Is she uncertain? Is she tentative? Is she humble? Or is she polite? Even in social interactions or gatherings, we would like to be with and agree with those who sound unassuming, humble, and polite. We seldom or not at all choose to be with arrogant and aggressive people. Same principle, I think, applies to writing this course. So the attitude, ma the attitude matters in writing this course. In this lecture, I clearly delineated the concepts, term paper, academic paper, thesis paper, and their practical application to the existing writing curriculum, so as to be guided on what advanced writing objectives and activities be required to students at the high school, senior high, college, master's, and doctorate levels. I also emphasized the importance of reviewing the basic foundation of academic writing, which is the patterns of essay development. This way, whatever levels of writing classes we are teaching, or whether you are now writing a term paper or an expository text, critique paper, book review, thesis writing or dissertation for doctorate, you always go back to how you are stating your ideas. I ended the lecture by pointing out the link between the basic essay patterns and the tone in academic discourse. In fact, how content was stated would reveal the writer's attitude that actually matters on how the reader would see the merit of the evidence, discussion, and the arguments articulated in the student's term paper, thesis, or dissertation. By reader, I mean the reviewer who would be evaluating the thesis paper. For the next lecture, we will be discussing first step on writing an essay, then the second step, point and support to the thesis statement. Writing research is like playing basketball. You learn skills by following a step-by-step -step process. You cannot proceed to slam dunk like Michael Jordan without learning how to properly dribble the ball first. For the reference that I used, it's a book. And so in, in referencing a book following APA format, APA stands for American Association Format. We include the family name, initial, year of publication, title, uh, place of publication which starts with the state, country, and the publisher. So in APA, you always ask what is italicized and what is capitalized. So in this case, take note that the title is italicized but then not all uh, words are capitalized. Only the first and if there is proper name or proper noun, then you can capitalized the other words in the title also in referencing there are two eds abbreviated 
ed, as in small ed and big ed. Small ed would refer to the edition, while big ed, as in capital ed, refers to the editor. So please take note of that. You will be dealing with referencing in the succeeding lectures that we will be having. For a detailed lecture with complete supporting details, exercises, and activities, please visit AppliedLinguistics101.blogspot.com. You may click this link found at the description section in my YouTube channel. If you wish to expect more lectures like this from me, if you wish me to continue uh, creating lectures, uh, academic lectures like this, Please do support by subscribing to my YouTube channel and I'd like to thank you for taking your time uh, viewing this blog and advance thank you for visiting AppliedLinguistics101.blogspot.com I know you will be visiting that blogspot because all the details, all the supporting details, exercises of, if you're a teacher or even a student, you want to have exercises, activities about this lecture. Just click uh, AppliedLinguistics101.blogspot.com that is stated in my description in my YouTube channel. So thank you for supporting uh, this blog, supporting AppliedLinguistics101.blogspot.com and see you in my future lectures.